let me tell you something, okay? I eat it up every time. That he was a theorist and has mommy issues. That is so real. The actual characters communicate. Hi everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. A is back talking about books. Today we are talking about Love Theoretically by Ali Hazelwood. This is her third novel. She's written three novellas and three novels. And let me just start off right off the bat by saying that if you've read one Ali Hazelwood book, you have basically read them all. They are copy paste, okay? But I am also gonna say that out of all the Ali Hazelwood books, this is the best one? question mark also i'm using a new sunscreen so my face might be a little shiny we're gonna stick with it overall i gave it a 3.75 out of 5 stars i thought it was pretty good but it wasn't the best thing ever it's definitely a very very easy read if you don't know what love theoretically is about i'm gonna go into a synopsis and then talk about my likes and dislikes love theoretically synopsis Love theoretically follows the love story of Elsie and Jack. It is a STEM book. Every single one of Ali Hazelwood books follow women in STEM, which I love. And there's always commentary about academia. It is a Mr. Steel Your Girl book. You know how many Mr. Steel Your Girl books I've read this year? If you don't know what I mean, I mean it's like brother, the brother steals the brother's girl. Or for example, like Reminders of Him, which I read last year. It was the guy steals the girl of his dead best friend so this one jack the main character steals his brother's girl quote unquote girl so it follows jack and elsie jack and elsie are both physicists oh this motherfucker look like low-key look it is a quote unquote enemies to lovers as most rom-coms can be enemies to lovers in the way that it's basically dislike to lovers they're both physicists elsie is a theoretical physicist and jack is an experimental physicist and it has been known for years and years and years that these two types of physicists butt heads and where the story starts off in the beginning is that they don't really know each other jack and elsie they don't know each other but elsie this girl elsie she is dating jack's brother quote unquote dating why do i say quote unquote dating is because Elsie is actually a fake dater. She teaches grad students in university. She's basically like a temp for professors. I forget what they call it in the book. Elsie is basically a professor temp, like she's a temporary professor. She doesn't have like tenure and all she really wants to do is research in her field. And she's very, very bright, just like most of the women in every single one of Allie Hazelwood's books. Elsie is a very bright, smart woman. She just needs to pay the bills. And academia, sadly enough, does not pay the bills. Teaching, which Elsie hates, does not pay the bills. So what does she do? She goes into fake dating. She goes on this app, starts a fake dating business along with her roommate, who is also a side character in the book. And Elsie starts to do this whole fake dating thing. And she meets this guy. His name is Greg. Greg has a secret that he is hiding from his family. He's like super uber rich. A lot of the guys who are on this fake dating app who need dates are usually super uber rich. Greg is one of them. And he's hiding the secret from his family and just wants his family to get off of his back about dating. Because Greg is actually asexual and doesn't really feel like he can be sexually or romantically involved with anybody. And his family really pushes him to be in a relationship. So he's just like, I'm so sick of it. I'm so tired of it. Elsie, I'm going to hire you to be my fake date. And Greg is actually one of Elsie's best clients. So we start off the book with Elsie on the third fake date that she goes out with Greg. And mind you, usually when you're on this fake dating website and in this business, you don't do repeat clients. It's like a one and done type of situation. You go on one fake date for the day that you need and that's the end of the relationship. But Elsie, since she really likes Greg as a client, has gone on two dates and the beginning of the book starts on the third fake date that Elsie and Greg go on. These dates are basically family functions. And at the family function, she meets Jack, who has always disliked Elsie, feels like she's hiding something, which she is because she's 
fake dating his brother. She calls herself the librarian. No one knows anything about Elsie. And Jack, in the beginning of the book, on the third fake date at this family function, is really, really suspicious of Elsie. He's like, I don't trust you. I don't trust you dating my brother. Jack is very protective of his brother because the whole family is very dysfunctional, Jack and Greg's family. And they are one of the only ones that actually really like each other. Jack is always questioning Elsie, questioning who she is, what are her intentions with her brother, because Jack is also not in on this fake dating relationship. He thinks that Greg and Elsie are together for real. That's when the story starts off. Honestly, from the very beginning, I will give this book that. It has the best tension between Elsie and Jack, the way that they kind of butt heads. And obviously because Greg and Elsie are not actually together, Elsie doesn't really know much about Greg's actual personal life. So when Jack starts to question her in the beginning of the book about Greg's work and she doesn't really know the answer to it, Jack is also very, very suspicious about that. They end the fake date family function that night and Elsie, her whole thing is she wants to quit her job. She hates teaching. She hates it. But it's the only way that she can make money. It is teaching and fake dating. It's the only way she can pay her bills. But she sees online that there is an opening at MIT for an interview. Like I said in the beginning of this video, there's a lot of butting heads between physicists who are theorists and experimentalists. And she sees that there is an opening position at MIT to be a researcher and really, really wants it because that is what she wants to do. That is her life. Her life is theory. Her life is research, research on physics. She's like, this is my dream job. I really, really want this job. I really want to be able to pay my bills through doing research for physics. So she goes to this dinner. She has a bunch of interviews and things like that. And at the first dinner, she sees Jack aka Greg's brother at this dinner where they are meeting the candidates aka Elsie and this one other person. That is when Jack kind of finds out that Elsie was lying about one being a librarian. Elsie also didn't know that Jack was a physicist but not only was he a physicist he was an experimentalist which theorists and experimentalists butt heads and actually years previous wrote a really big article about why theorists, aka what Elsie is, is so bad. So that's why they kind of have this enemies to lovers type of situation too, is because Jack is an experimentalist and Elsie's a theorist. And also Jack created this article that started the butting heads of theorists and experimentalists. And it's this whole point that gets brought back up throughout the book about this article and like what Jack has basically done to the detriment of all physical theorists everywhere. Yeah, that's kind of where the book starts out. It is like a contemporary enemies to lovers. Starts out with Jack and Elsie butting heads and Elsie tries to go out for this interview at MIT, which Jack is also part of that program and that's kind of where the story kicks off. Jack is very suspicious of her and finally finding out that she's actually a physicist, not a librarian, why is she dating his brother, and this whole different conflict about Greg, reason why he hired Elsie, gets all brought up. All of this basically happens at the beginning of the book. So now I want to get into my review, my likes and my dislikes about the book. My overall thoughts on the book is that it was a 3.75 out of 5 stars. I think out of all of Allie Hazelwood's novels, this is the third one. It is one of my more favorite ones. I think that the main issue with it was the pacing because all of the good stuff, all of the things that I absolutely devoured happens in the first half of the book. And then once you hit the second half, the book slows down incredibly. There is a love confession that happens at around the 156 page mark. And Jack basically confesses his feelings to Elsie about how he was super attracted to Elsie, but was really conflicted about his feelings about it because Elsie was so his type, but she's also dating Greg which is his brother and he felt like such an asshole for having feelings for a girl who was dating his brother and the more he got to know her through the interview process at MIT the more he ended up really liking her which made his feelings worse and then he found out about the fa like he goes through this 
this let me tell you something okay let me tell you something this love confession on page 156 it was giving Akko math vibes, okay? Akko math meaning A Court of Mist and Fury vibes. You know chapter 54 of A Court of Mist and Fury? If you've ever read A Court of Thorns and Roses, go read it. I really like it. If you really like characters, if you really are into characters, that is a great series to read. Honestly, characters, amazing, talented, wonderful, blah, 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 blah. Amazing, show-stopping, spectacular, never the same. If you love A Court of Mist and Fury, chapter 54, one of my all-time favorite most memorable it will be ingrained in my head forever page 156 of this book give those vibes okay it gives chapter 54 vibes it gives chapter 54 vibes it is a whole big love confession they recontextualize the whole beginning of the story through the perspective of the male love interest and i eat that shit up i eat it up every time and i ate the shit up okay i ate this shit up I was so invested. Obviously, when you read it, you can kind of see the longing. That is one thing I will also really give Ali Hazelwood is that if you love longing, you will get longing. If you love simps, if you love a Mr. Darcy type of character, a man who is just longing after a girl that he cannot have and is just pining after her, if you love pining, you will love reading Ali Hazelwood books, okay? That is just that. It has it in every one of these books. That is why even though they are basically mediocre books, like middle of the road type of books, I will eat it up every single time because I love pining. I love pining, I love longing, and this had that in here. Page 156 and on, that little whole section, the Echo Math vibes, the Accord of Mist and Fury vibes, I ate that shit up, okay? I knew from that moment on, I liked this book the best out of all of Ali Hazelwood books just because the actual characters communicate because if you go watch my love on the brain video which i will have linked and especially the love hypothesis okay even though i really love the love hypothesis those two books those characters do not communicate in the slightest It just felt really immature. These people are 30 plus years old. Levi is 32 and B is I think five years younger. They're old. They should understand how to express their feelings. Those characters do not communicate. They are so bad at communication. There's so much miscommunication. It is 30 year olds. It is grown ass people acting like teenagers. Acting so, so adolescent, but in this book, what I love is that the man is so honest about his feelings. So, so, so honest about his feelings. I really liked that about him. But that is also the only thing I liked about him. Because I will tell you this, is that as a character, Jack was very underdeveloped. Like, you did not know a single thing about him besides that he was a theorist and has mommy issues. That's all you knew about him. That is all you know about Jack. Other than that, I love that he was so forward about his emotions and always told Elsie how he felt about her. But like I said, there is a lot of pacing issues because once you get to the halfway point and then they actually start really, really dating and going out on dates, the whole rest of the book is so forgettable. I don't remember it. Nothing was making me kick my feet in the air screaming. Nothing. The first half? chef's kiss amazing oh my god wonderful talented but i also knew that when i read a love confession on page 156 of 380 pages i knew that this book was gonna have a lot of pacing issues and it did biggest drawback is the pacing issues this book could have been condensed to half of it or 75 percent of it because it slowed down a lot the characters actually acted like adults or i'm gonna say one of the characters because jack is the one who acts like adult like an adult but elsie is a whole nother situation even though it's not as fun to read as say the love hypothesis i was so taken aback at how much this book read me to a t i'm basically exposing myself here but elsie like besides the fact that i don't have diabetes elsie is basically a copy and paste of me because the whole journey that this book goes through is basically elsie's character development journey which i really love even though jack is super super underdeveloped as a character they make up for it in elsie elsie has a problem and the whole problem is that she is an uber incredible people pleaser 
and she molds herself to be what everybody else wants her to be doesn't even know she has her own personality they talk about it so much in this book i was like th she's so me that is so real like i read this and i was like is this play about me is this play about us wait is this fucking play about us they cannot be they read me so so bad and it kind of goes into the idea of elsie being a fake dater she's really good at being a fake date because she knows how to read people it's giving very much bella and edward type vibe because it's one of those things where elsie can read everybody in the room like edward right except she can't read jack jack is so hard to read doesn't know what he's thinking so she really has to be herself around him and she doesn't even know what that means she doesn't know what it means to be herself so that's kind of what she tries to discover in the book there is another drawback was i think the writing style kind of irked me when it came to the character development of elsie because they were a little too on the nose with it we talked about elsie's uh psychology and her as a character way too much real people talking about their own personalities don't talk like this jack kept reading elsie saying you're doing that thing again where you try to read people they say these bits of dialogue that no one would actually say we get it we get it elsie has no personality elsie doesn't know what her personality is she has no personality can you stop repeating it because they talk about it way too much i understand that this is part of character development i am a character driven reader so i really love character development the characters to each other talk about it to the point where it's too on the nose you need a little subtlety there when it comes to character development you need subtlety with things that i definitely saw in something like book lovers by emily henry or other books they have character development but the characters don't outright tell each other their own psychologies to each other every 10 pages and that is what we got in this another thing that i did like about this book is that there are a couple of spicy scenes not too spicy honestly i wasn't feeling some type of way when i was reading the spice scenes in this but i do remember i have it in my notes here i do remember thinking that i really liked that the spice scenes move the plot forward because i really like gratuitous spice scenes unless you're like really trying to get me going you know what i mean i really really devour when spice scenes move the plot forward and i just remember them doing that in this book i kind of went all over the place just like i do with most books i just thought it was really cute overall i think the male love interest was really really sweet for everything that he did for Elsie but also that he really wasn't a character himself and they never really get there after the whole interview portion the MIT portion of the book if you read it you know what I'm talking about after the whole interview process this book slows down there's so many patient issues and I think that the ending maybe I'm a stupid ass bitch but it did not make sense to me I don't understand how this book ended I was really confused with the last chapter and epilogue where Elsie like it's Jack's birthday or something and she gives him a gift if someone can ex please explain to me maybe it's because one of my favorite love languages is gift giving i love to give gifts i love to receive gifts etc etc if you give me words of affirmation i just won't believe you you can be like oh i love you you're beautiful amazing talented blah, blah, blah. i just won't believe you i'll just be like stop makes me uncomfortable but acts of service uh, gift giving quality time i eat that shit up and maybe it's because i'm not a words of affirmation a love language and the ending was basically words of affirmation basically what happens the whole point of the whole book was that elsie has no character she lies about everything because she just wants to people please and jack calls her out about it so much jack is like you're lying to me you don't have to try to be a people pleaser to me we can take it slow we can take it really slow because I know that that is what you need because you're not going to believe that I actually really like you for you. She's so real for that because that's fucking me. Anyway, like you just need to take it slow because you just don't believe that I like you for you. And I want you to know that I'm going to be here for you. This and the third. They start dating and then they have the epilogue. It's eight months later. And please someone explain this to me because I do not understand. It's Jack's birthday and Elsie's like, happy birthday, Jack. I got you this thing in Jello." and he's like oh my god is this my gift and she says no this is your gift and gives him a letter and the letter basically says i'll read it out to you this is a spoiler if you don't want to hear it don't hear it okay just skip maybe like 
15 seconds ahead. It ends with, Dear Jack, I know I've been slow, but I just wanted you to know something. I'm right here with you. So basically saying, because in the last chapter, Jack says, I'm here, but take your time. I'll wait for you as long as it takes for you to be comfortable with me, basically. That's what he says to Elsie. And then she finally replies to him months in advance saying, I'm right here with you. Basically a love confession. And she considered that his birthday gift. What kind of birthday gift is that? No offense. No offense. But I was so confused. I was like, wait, am I missing something? Because she does this whole thing in this entire epilogue chapter. Oh, I have, I have a plan. My roommate's gonna help me with my plan to surprise Jack. And it's literally just a letter. It's literally just a letter that says, I'm here with you. And I'm like, am I missing a page? Did I miss something? Did she propose to him? And I just like missed it? I don't know. Did, did I miss like, oh, there's a ring in there? Wait, I, I, I don't get it. So please someone explain to me, maybe she really thought that that was just it. Like, oh my God, he's gonna love this. And I was like, bitch, what? I'm sorry, what kind of present is that? Why did they end the book that way? Why did they end that book that way? Anyway, that's my very chaotic ramble about this book, my likes, my dislikes. I feel like there's a lot more that I could have said. My thoughts are so jumbled. I read this book incredibly fast. It is an incredibly fast read. The main thing is that it slows down a lot. I read half of this from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. And then the next day, after I got through all of the good stuff, it just slowed down so much and the second half just didn't do it for me as much as the first half did please 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 let me know your thoughts about what you thought of that but this book it is a new release i'm gonna do a little ranking i'm gonna do a little ranking of my overall thoughts on all of ali hazelwood books so far i'm gonna say my favorite plot was really good the stem academia type of commentary really well done plot best plot goes to love on the brain yay round of applause round of applause yay best characters love story wise best communication the most realistic couple love theoretically yay yay round of applause yay and the overall most fun to read and most <laughs> is gonna go to the love hypothesis yay 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 round of applause even though the love hypothesis was super super i cannot believe grown-ass adults are doing this i cannot believe what is happening before my eyes it is so fun to read that is why it has over a million ratings on goodreads it is so fun so so fun and just an overall really like, ooh, like, ooh, you know, a fun time. So that's why The Love Hypothesis is hyped up as it is. I do feel like as a writer, this gave a little bit of a different vibe for Allie Hazelwood than her other books and novellas have. She actually had her characters communicate, which is new. Let me know your rankings about her works below if you agree with me if you disagree with me whatever your thoughts on the book was and yeah please let me know i love to hear it and thank you so much for watching and i will catch you in the next one